For those of you using your prayer books, morning prayer for Wednesday begins on page 401. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. The opening canticle, Song of God's Grace. Blessed are you, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for you have blessed us in Christ Jesus with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You chose us to be yours in Christ before the foundation of the world. We shall be holy and blameless before you. In love you destined us to be your children through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of your will. To the praise of your glorious grace, which you freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen two psalms set for today, Psalm 137 and Psalm 138, if you turn to page 369 in your prayer books, page 369, Psalm 137, uh, of this psalm we'll say together the first six verses. By the waters of Babylon we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. As for our harps, we hung them up upon the trees that are in that land. For there those who led us away captive required of us a song. And those who had despoiled us demanded mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its mastery. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not prefer Jerusalem above my chief joy. Psalm 138. I will give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Even before the gods will I sing your praises. I will bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Because of your faithfulness and your loving kindness, for you have made your name and your words supreme over all things. At a time when I called to you, you gave me answer and put new strength within my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. For though the Lord is exalted, he looks upon the lowly, and he comprehends the proud from afar. Though I walk in the midst of danger, yet will you preserve my life, you will stretch out your hand against the fury of my enemies, and your right hand shall save me. The Lord will complete his purpose for me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your own hands. We consecrate this day to your service, O Lord. May all our thoughts, words, and actions be well-pleasing to you and serve the good of our brothers and sisters through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. First of our readings this morning is from the second book of Chronicles, chapter 33, verses 1 to 20. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. He 
He reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the abominable practices of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. For he rebuilt the high places that his father Hezekiah had pulled down, and erected altars to the Baals, made sacred poles, worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. He built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem may my name be forever. He built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. He made his son pass through fire in the valley of the, of the son of Hinnom, practiced soothsaying and augury and sorcery, and dealt with mediums and with wizards. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. The carved image of the idol that he had made he set in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to his son Solomon, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put not put my name forever. I will never again remove the feet of Israel from the land that I appointed for your ancestors, if only they will be careful to do all that I have commanded them, all the law, the statutes, and the ordinances given through Moses. Manasseh misled Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that they did more evil than the nation whom the Lord had destroyed before the people of Israel. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but he gave no heed. Therefore the Lord brought against them the commanders of the army of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh captive in manacles and bound him with fetters, and brought him to Babylon. While he was in distress, he entreated the favor of the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his ancestors. He prayed to him. God received his entreaty, heard his plea, and restored him again to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord indeed was God. Afterward, he built an outer wall for the city of David west of Gion, in the valley, reaching the entrance at the fish gate. He carried it around Ophel and raised it to a very great height. He also put commanders of the army in all the fortified cities of Judah. He took away the foreign gods and the idols from the house of the Lord and all the altars that he had built on the mountain of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem, and he threw them out of the city. He also restored the altar of the Lord and offered on it sacrifices of well-being and of thanksgiving. And he commanded Judah to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. The people, however, still sacrificed at the high places, but only to the Lord, their God. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, his prayer to his God, and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, these are in the annals of the kings of Israel. His prayer and how God received his entreaty, all his sin and his faithfulness, faithlessness, the sites on which he built high places and set up the sacred poles and the Im images before he humbled himself, these are written in the records of the seers. So Manasseh slept with his ancestors, and they buried him in his house. His son Ammon succeeded him. May the Lord, may your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. The second reading is from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21, verses 27 to 39. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, who had seen him in the temple, stirred up the crowd. They seized him, shouting, Fellow Israelites, help! This is the man who is teaching everyone, everywhere, against our people, our law, and this place. More than that, he has actually brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had previously seen Trophimus, the Ephesian, with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Then all the city was aroused, and the people rushed together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and immediately the doors were shut. 
while they were trying to kill him, word came to the triune of the cohort that all Jerusalem was in, a, in an uproar. Immediately, he took soldiers and sent centurions and ran down to them. When they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came, arrested him, and ordered him to be bound with two chains. He inquired who he was and what he had done. Some in the crowd shouted one thing, some another, and as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. When Paul came to the steps, the violence of the mob was so great that he had to be carried by the soldiers. The crowd that followed kept shouting, away with him. Just as Paul was about to be brought into the barracks, he said to the tr tribune, may I say something to you? The tribune replied, do you know Greek? Then you are not the Egyptian who recently stirred up a revolt and led the 4,000 assassins out into the wilderness. Paul replied, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, a citizen and an important of, of an important city. I beg you, let me speak to the people. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. And now we say the canticle, the Te Deum Laudamus. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty and bounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, you, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the Virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, brought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Collect Prayer for this week. Creator God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service that here we may have your peace and in the world to come may see you face to face through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we pray today that the church throughout the world may be an effective sign of the way to everlasting happiness and to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may learn to trust in spiritual values which enrich our being and not in material possessions which bring discontent to our souls.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that we may never close our hearts to those in need, but consciously involve ourselves in Christ's work of healing and reconciling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the sick and the disabled may experience the Lord's care through the love of their neighbours and their friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we are asked today to pray for the Diocese of Gippsland, for Bishop Richard Trelaw, and for all the clergy and people of that diocese. We pray for Footscray Parish, and for its chaplain, Soma Gabriel Mayen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own parish of all saints with St. Catherine, holding all our parish family in our thoughts and in our prayers, but especially today, we hold in our thoughts and prayers Judy Capito, Margaret Davidson, and Gwen Dovey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant us to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that we may with one voice glorify our God and Father. Amen. <laughs>